Yeah, we're switching to cricket now on this Wednesday edition of the Sports Night Zone. The Caribbean will host the 2024 ICC T20 World Cup, but another ICC showpiece takes centre stage in less than 24 hours. The men's 50-over World Cup bowls off in India on Thursday. And despite the West Indies not competing this time around, the show goes on, of course. England and New Zealand will clash in the opening match in a repeat of the last edition's final where England came out as the winners in an exciting final at Lords that went into a super over. Both teams are facing injury issues with Kane Williamson confirmed to miss the first three matches for the Black Caps while Ben Stokes is in doubt for the opener. Joining us via Zoom to preview this potential blockbuster of an opening match is international creed commentator Fazir Mohamed. Faz, great to have you back on the Sports Match Zone in our, in our new setting and what a way to start the ICC 50 over World Cup. Indeed, good to be aboard the Starship Enterprise with that <laughs> impressive new set that you have there. But uh, certainly you would hope that the, the World Cup can really take off uh, with, with this opening match. And, and indeed, if it's anything like the finale between these same two teams four years ago, then it should really set the stage uh, for the next six weeks of this World Cup. Mm. Interested to see um, if Ben Stokes will, in fact, play because he's uncertain for the opener. And what a player Ben Stokes is, Faz. He, he is such a... Uh, he is such an impact player that I don't know that there is another cricketer in the world who is capable of just, just commanding um, a, 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 a situation in a game in the way quite like he does. I think you're absolutely right on that score, Lance. Uh, we, we saw it in the Ashes series. Yes. We saw it in the 2019 World Cup final. Yes, he had a bit of luck along the way. But uh, I think it's, it's the, the sheer weight of his persona and, and the fact that, again, because of his own turbulent family experiences of a few years ago, the fact that he was uh, in a brawl in Southampton when the West Indies were there in 2017 uh, in the midst of a couple of one-day internationals and the chastening experiences there, that it's almost liberated him because you can get sucked in to the media hype, especially in the United Kingdom, especially in England. And, and, and you get preoccupied with what is being said, what is, was, what is being inferred, uh, the condemnation. But I think what he has done, and you see it in the style of England's cricket, not just the white ball format, but also the red ball format now, is that there's a sense of liberation that you go out there and enjoy the game. And of course, that is easier said than done when almost everything is on the line. But he has certainly shown that the way he has played uh, his cricket, certainly over the last couple of years, has reflected that, that freedom. And he has the skill, of course, to back it up. Yeah. And, and Faz, we had a brief discussion in our production meeting this morning whether we would, in fact, do a segment previewing the World Cup because the West Indies aren't, aren't there. And uh, it was a brief discussion. We decided the, the, the weight of the event commands us having some discussion, discussion on it. But pretty painful the next few weeks for the West Indies fans watching this, Faz. If it were only a few weeks, it would be bearable. But it's six weeks, six weeks <laughs> and a bit, Lance. You know, there's a word in Trinidad and Tobago called tabanka. Yes. Tabanka means you have this longing, this yearning for a loved one. Well, this is a cricket tabanka uh, because... To, to think that this is a World Cup where the West Indies were the first champ champions, the second champions, could have been the third, but for that upset, set the trend, set the standard. And indeed, during the tournament, I'm sure you're going to hear some of the great names of West Indies cricket being mentioned with a sense of awe by a lot of the commentators. And the West Indies are not there. So, so, so really, this is a a painful experience. And there is no distraction. There's no T20, T20, T10, or T anything going on anywhere yeah. because this is the supreme showpiece yeah. of the cricketing year. Yeah, but the, the, the CWI CG Insurance Super 50 starts soon, fast, so that's yeah. a distraction. So no right? Tabanka. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I really hope the tournament goes well. It's disappointing already to see that Nicholas Puran has made himself unavailable uh, for uh, the Trinidad Tobago Red Force, which uh, again is a, an, another talking point. But, but yeah, yeah it, it's going to be going on. It's going to be uh, welcome to see our Caribbean cricketers in action. But let's face it, it's not the World Cup. Yeah. Faz, a uh, quick question from me. Which of the teams do you think look like, you know, outright favourites? Are they just the regular ones that we always talk about? 
Yeah, well, that, I was looking at it and I was trying to, to come up with a, with, with a four and I, I can't get too far away okay. that I can't get away at all from the four from the last World Cup. Uh, I, I think India are the, are the clear favourites this time around. You've got England as well. Yes, they may be ageing, but they still have a tremendous amount of quality in their team to, to, to the extent they could leave out Jason Roy at the last moment and, and bring in uh, Harry Brook. Uh, you've got, uh, of course, uh, the, the New Zealanders, uh, who might be a bit off the ball, but again, you never discount them. You look at their record from the first World Cup in 75 when they reached the semifinals and lost to the West Indies. They are always there or thereabouts. And of course, Australia, because Australia are Australia. They may never be 100% at any given time, but you never discount them. And that's why those are my four that I see making the semifinals. Yeah, okay, Faz, let's, let's see if that, that works out. Uh, you know, I have a lot of admiration when these things come up for the Aussies but um, no matter what cricket is being played now I, I take India if it's T20 I take India if it's test cricket I take India if it's ODI cricket I take India they just have too many match winners so uh, <laughs> India to me is a team to beat so let, let's let's see let's see how that goes um, bringing it back home though the West Indies women preparing fast to do battle with the Australians in the series deciding third and final T20 International Thursday morning Caribbean time. Of course, it will be live on Sportsmax. The series locked at 1-1 and Hayley Matthews will be eyeing another stellar performance with her team. What will it take for the Windies to get over the line here? Because they were tremendous in the um, second match. Not bad in the first match, but um, they need a repeat performance to get by the Aussies. Indeed. It, it was tremendous. It was record-breaking. It was fantastic. The concern, though, would be the reliance on the captain, yes. Haley Matthews. 99 in the first match, 132 in the second. Former captain Stefani Taylor, a valuable contribution as well. You're not going to be able to sustain that, for, for example, in tournament play. And we saw that at the last women's event, international event. Haley Matthews' performance speaks for itself. She's taking over from Stefani Taylor, who held that, that standard as the top all-rounder in the world for a long, long time before injuries and loss of form and so many other elements came into it. So, yes, you'd want Haley Matthews to lead from the front yet again. But for the sake of the West Indies women's game, you want the other players to step up. Chanel Henry, Shadika Gajnabi, and so many others. They've got to recognize that you can't rely on your captain alone. You can't rely on your stellar former captain as well. Yes, they may deliver. Yes, they could, again, surprise the Australians. I thought the Australians' tactics, bowling to Hayley Matthews, were poor. This idea of bowling wide outside the off stump just seemed to make no sense at all, but credit to Hayley Matthews that she capitalized on it. So she's going to have to contend, I'm sure, with some different tactics this time around going into that match tomorrow morning our time. But I think more importantly is for the other players, the other players around the stellar performers to step up and give a more concerted, comprehensive effort for the West Indies. Yeah, I agree with you, Faz, because uh, if you look particularly at Haley Matthews, and you, you referenced it just now, 99 in the first game, 132 in the, in the second game, and... Um, you know, the law of average would suggest that she may not be as prolific in this third match. And uh, given the quality of this Australian team, she will need to be. Because if, if, she, if, she, if she isn't and the other players don't come to the fore, um, the West Indies could be in problems here. Added to the fact that the Australians, based on their temperament, they're the type of team, they come off a loss like this and they come out angry and guns blazing the next match. And, um, and win comprehensively. That's, that's how they are, generally. Absolutely. And that's what the West Indies have to prepare for. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to tell yourself, OK, you were on a high with that tremendous victory. No one expected it, really, in the context of the game. Maybe the, the diehards would have, but I, I certainly didn't when I saw a total of over 200. But they, they pulled it off fantastic, tremendous. Now you've got to put that behind you and prepare for the backlash. And you've got to be ready to take on the Australians at their own game once again. It's easier said than done, of course. But the fact that they won and won so famously just a couple of days ago, they, they should build on that. Not with, with the expectation again that, OK, don't worry, the skipper is going to get the bulk of the runs. Stefani Taylor is going to make a significant contribution and they're going to take us home. No, you as a player, you have to tell yourself that, look, I am going to be the one stepping forward. I am going to be the one to deliver. If it is that the captain falls early, it's not the end of the world. We're going to continue, whether we're setting a target 
or chasing a target. Mm. That has to be the belief in the side. I agree with you 100%, Faz. So um, in Trinidad and Tobago tomorrow morning, Eastern Caribbean time, 4.05 is the start time for this third and deciding T20 International. It's 3.05 in Jamaica. I'm pretty certain we'll all be watching. Thanks, Faz. We'll talk again soon. Pleasure. Take care. Yeah, back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.